got to change. It's got to change. I mean, the big question is, is Joe Biden the right white man to do that? <laughs> I don't know what turns my stomach more. Joe Biden pathetically claiming that so-called white male culture needs to change or the racist on CNN insisting that he shouldn't run based on nothing but his skin color and gender. I don't know about you, but I would like to choose my president based on their ability to do the job, not their skin color or gender. First of all, what's wrong with white culture? Why does it need to change? And what the hell even is white male culture? It appears to just be a broadly generalized stereotype. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the jobs that these women are currently doing were built by white men. The technology they're using, all invented by white men. I really hate getting into this because the truth is it's a lot of different people that help build these institutions, but leading them were white men. Sure, there's white men throughout history who have done a lot of evil, but conversely, there's a lot of good that has been done by white men. I'm not making an argument that white men or white people are superior or anything like that. I'm simply saying that they're not a bunch of evil, useless cave beasts like the people on CNN would have you believe. This all really just comes down to the principle that you're not supposed to judge people based on their skin color or their gender. This appears to be yet another and a long line of standards being set by the left that apply exclusively to white people. They don't set these standards for any other group of people. For example, so-called cultural appropriation is only ever enforced against whites. Well, it's really interesting because he talked about Anita Hill and how he could have done more. But this is years after. So this delayed apology is a little suspect. So apparently they're talking about sexual assault? I'm confused. What does sexual assault have to do with white male culture? For a while now, I've heard that white males are actually underrepresented in violent crimes and sexual assaults, and I can find the data to back that up as far as violent crime, but I've had a lot of trouble finding the sexual assault statistics that back that up. If you search for sexual assault by race, Google gives you the top result of an organization called RAIN. That organization has a bunch of graphs that show that white males represent 57% of all sexual assaults and rapes. What I can't find is a per capita breakdown on those statistics. If anybody could provide them and post them in the comments, I'd appreciate it. The thing is, the raw numbers are likely to show white males as being the top perpetrators simply because they are the majority in the country. However, if you break that number down based on the per capita representation in the country, I'm guessing that you're going to find white males are underrepresented in those crimes. Why do I say that? Because if you look at the raw crime data, it looks like white males are committing the vast majority of crime in the country. But when you break that down per capita based on the representation, you find that it's actually black males committing over half of all violent crime, despite only being 6% of the country. Why isn't anybody asking black culture to change? And in fact, anybody that I've ever seen suggest that gets attacked as a racist. And let me reiterate in case anybody's confused, I'm not saying this as an attack on black people in this country. I'm only pointing it out because it demonstrates the media's manipulation of data. Actually, I agree with Joan. I can't tell you how much pressure was always put for me to go above and beyond. And I always had to rise to the occasion. Welcome to real life. Everyone struggles. Sure, there are people out there who get an easy ride, but most of us are just like this black woman, fighting and struggling to succeed. Being a white male didn't stop YouTube from demonetizing my channel and taking away my main source of revenue. She says she had to do, quote, a lot more and, quote, work twice as hard. Based on what measure? It sounds to me like she's just making broad generalizations based on skin color, which I was always taught is wrong. In today's Democrat party, it's not only acceptable, but it's the bedrock of their increasingly extremist ideology. They don't like white people, and they most definitely do not like white men. You've got Joe Biden as the, the white grandfather in all of this, the white man saying it's a white man's culture. Okay, it's got to change. Is I have an idea for how we can change it. Don't run. Hey, I just got a great idea. Why doesn't the white colorless Joan Walsh step down and give her position to a beautiful black woman? What better way to change white woman culture? In fact, I'm going to go ahead and ask her right now. It's almost unbelievable that these women are sitting around dictating who can and can't run for president based on nothing but their skin color and gender. Would it be acceptable to tell a black man that he shouldn't be running for president based on his skin color? Of course not, but leftists aren't exactly known for their consistency. 
And, it, and his treatment of Anita Hill will be will remain a huge issue if he does run. Questioning Anita Hill after she accused Clarence Thomas of sexually harassing her? Ah, I see. It's the media trying to rewrite history again. During the confirmation hearings for Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, Anita Hill came forward with sexual harassment claims. Her only evidence at the time was a polygraph test that she herself commissioned. Sound familiar? Other than that, she presented nothing to back up her claims. The outrage seems to be that she wasn't just instantly believed and that anybody questioned her story at all. They claim that Anita Hill's reputation was under attack, but isn't that exactly what was happening to Clarence Thomas? Did Joe Biden not have a duty to ask her tough questions and not just accept her claims blindly? Her only witness was a California lower court judge who claimed that Anita Hill told her about the harassment. However, it was found that she was lying. The judge claimed to have been in D.C. when Anita Hill told her about the alleged harassment, but it turned out that she had already actually moved to California before this alleged harassment had even begun. So yeah, it really looks like the media and the Me Too people are attempting to rewrite history as a means of keeping another old white man off the ticket. Pathetically, instead of defending himself, Joe Biden chose to play along in the hopes that they would call off attacks and leave him alone. Why would he ever think that? These people are like piranha when they smell blood in the water. I really don't care if Joe Biden runs for president or not. In fact, I really prefer Thanks if he for doesn't. watching. Please but like, he share, decide and subscribe. Not to based on nothing but his skin color and his gender.